Good morning. Worship is something that you do with your whole body and your life, not just singing in a song, uh, a, a sentimental uh, lullaby to Jesus. Jesus said, they worship me in vain, teaching as the commandments of God the doctrines of men. The doctrines of men cause you to worship in vain. Now, what was he saying? Jesus was saying that your whole life has been got, has got to be given to God. Now, God is the creator. He is the all in all. He's life. He's the breath that you breathe. In one part of God is life itself. He's nature. He is nature. We call it nature, but he is nature. He is everything that moves and has its being. Now that's only one part of God. He's a mind as well, and a father, and a judge. There's all sorts of sides to God, but it is the kingdom of God that brings life, not the kingdom of darkness, and not any other kind of kingdom. So we have to understand that the kingdom of God is the very essence of all things. And when you approach the mind of the kingdom of God, the Father, or the Lord Jesus, you have to approach him knowing who and what he is. Now, the one thing that God can't tolerate in, in a human sort of way, in a, a childish sort of way, or a simplified sort of way, he said, I'm a jealous God. Of course, God doesn't have these kind of uh, low emotional things. What he's saying is, is that you can't contact me unless you do it with all your being. You can't get the blessings of God. True worship has to be based upon truth, spirit and truth. If you teach or follow or even listen to the teachings of men, you find yourself not being able to worship God properly. So when you come to dial the number called God, help me number, the helpline, you can't get through. This applies especially to his benefits, such as miracles and healings. Um, you can't get through. Now the blessings are there. They're in the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is a few inches away from you, but it's separated by by the smell of the flesh. Okay. Uh, we have to ask him. We have to bring it through, supplicate. We have to bring it from the spirit to the physical realm. We do that by calling on God with all our heart. Now, when we don't know any better, the mercy and grace of God extends and says, well, according to the light that you've got, then worship me with everything you've got. But when you know better, when you get to know who God is, to serve him half-heartedly or to pray to him half-heartedly or to only give him part of your life and then try and worship him, well, the angel said, don't worship me, worship God, to John in Revelations 21. Worship God, only him. You try to worship God with half your heart, and you'll get nothing from him. He's a jealous God. There are many voices, and Jesus said, the voices crowd in and kill the word and the respect for the Word of God. For instance, when you come to God for healing, you have many alternatives, and you supply yourself with many alternatives just in case God doesn't work. You see? And then you expect to get healed. This is not good. True worship worships Him in spirit and based upon truth. In vain they worship me, Jesus said, in vain. Imagine that, spending your whole life worshipping God and find out it was pointless. Just pointless. It is pointless, Jesus said. It's pointless worshipping me, teaching 
as commandments of God, the things, the doctrines or teachings of men. Now, listen quite clearly. It says, there's doctrines of demons. In the last days, there'll be doctrines of demons. Now, this is quite evidently so today. And in our science, we teach that God doesn't exist, that things just happened automatically by themselves. There was no controlling element or no mind involved, or no creator. In science, we teach it. In psychology, we teach there's no such thing as demons. It's all multiple personalities. In 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 our lifestyles, we, we teach it's okay to choose and do whatever you want, and, and we teach that women can have equal rights to men and usurp the authority of men. All these kind of things, and um, children can dishonor their parents and uh, go and do what the you know, heck they like and call them by their first names and disrespect them and never provide money for them when they're old age. This is intolerant towards God. Now you come and start to worship God. You can't do that. You're doing something's wrong. Worship is your life. He doesn't want half your life. He wants all of it. He wants single-minded faith. He can't do anything for double-minded faith. People who put their trust in other things, in the God of this world, in man's flesh, in human beings. Now, don't get me wrong, police forces, judges, and doctors um, are, are of God because they're trying to preserve life. Even armies. But, but this is a low order of God, and there's a high order of God. And the high order of God is get your healing not through doctors. Get your healing from the Lord. Because even through doctors it's from the Lord, indirectly. But but get your healing from the Lord. I am the Lord who heals you. See? But how can you get your healing from the Lord when you are divided in your heart as to which, where you're supposed to go for it? You see, my sheep hear my voice. If, you, if the Lord tells you to go to a doctor, go to a doctor tells you to go to a meeting, healing meeting, go to a healing meeting. If he tells you just to stand and believe, just stand and believe. You're led by God. If you're not led by God, you're none of his. Okay? Don't choose. Don't say, because I'm doubtful, I'll do it the other way. Be careful. Time will come when you have to call on God alone, when there's no remedy from the doctors. Now what you're going to do? You see? Now what you're going to do? God is a jealous God. That just simply means this. You can't bring the blessings of God through all the benefits from the spiritual to the physical if you do it with half your life and heart. If you love God, love him with all your heart. You call on me and and you'll reach me if you do it with all your heart, he says. You'll, if you do it with all your heart, you'll call on me, and I'll answer you if you do it with all your heart. You see, but if you do it with part of your heart, how are you going to get to God? You're dialing the wrong number. The telephone number's wrong, you see. Single-minded faith comes by worshipping God. The Syrophoenician woman in Matthew chapter 12, she came and bothered Jesus for healing. He ignored her. Then she bothered the disciples. They chased her away. She came back to Jesus. He was about to ignore her again when she began to worship him. Now she caught his interest. He turned to her and said, What is it you want? She said, I I need healing for my daughter, severely demon-possessed. And he said to her, this is not fitting to give the children's bread to Gentiles. And she said, yes, but even the little dogs eat the crumbs from under the table. And he said, for this saying, your daughter is healed. Now what happened? 
the healing was there. Jesus is not miserable. He's not holding back the healing, but he needs her to connect with his spirit. And she's not connecting while she's just crying about her daughter. You see, you may have family members that are ill, but if you pray for them as a family, you, you will not get the connection. You need to pray for them as a priest. You need to go outside, come back on with your priest's hat, and then pray the prayer of faith. Not think of them as family members, you see. You can't do this thing in the natural. You have to do it in the spirit. Jesus said the Father is seeking people to worship him in spirit and truth. This simply means God is not a tyrant. He doesn't need our worship. He need us to be serious when we contact him. God want to heal us and bless us more than we want to be healed. You know, it is not a pleasure to God when people die, not even his enemies. He would that everybody lived. God is a God of life, but he needs the connection. He needs your permission. He needs you to dial the right number. It's not that he himself is stopping the healing. He has got the healing there waiting for you to connect and take it in your hands and give it to yourself or to a family member. He's waiting for that, desiring that. God is the giver of life. He made all life. Do you think he wants to take it away again? It says quite clearly in James chapter 1 that, that every good gift comes from God, from the Father of lights, from above, and with whom there is no change or shadow of variation. He will not change. He is the giver of good gifts, not evil. Evil's when your child is dying. Evil's when you are dying. Evil is when you can't do your work properly, when you can't live your life properly. This is evil. And God is here to remedy that evil and to give you life. But to do it, he requires your single-minded focus and respect. You do this through pure worship. Worship helps you to just focus on one person, not with just with your mind, but with your spirit. You give everything from the bottom of your heart to him. You give him everything. Then he gives everything to you. That's true worship. And it's got nothing to do with singing. But, of course, you can worship him with a song. But this has got nothing to do with singing. This is worship. God bless you.